thank you very much and i want to thank um, the scotch foundation for inviting me to this um uh, before i specifically answer that question i just want to make a couple of points i think it's important to understand that uh, we actually have a lot going for us uh, from an economic perspective uh, you know macroeconomic stability political stability are two important ingredients to attract any kind of investments and i think uh, from an investor standpoint whether domestic or globally those are two things that uh, most investors feel relatively comfortable uh, so that's important the second point i would make is that from a growth perspective and since the topic is about about growth and employment uh, a lot a lot of it has to do with um, domestic factors as an economy we are less reliant on exports relative to china or certain other economies and therefore there are enough uh, prospects for growth uh, domestically that we need to capitalize on uh, so far there have been only two engines that have been firing really for the last few years and that's been consumption and government spending i think private sector capex and rural consumption are two areas and rural investments are two areas that need to um, really ramp up in order to make sure that the economy can get from the 6% to 8% it won't get there purely on uh, consumption and government spending and as you rightly said there's a lot of money available whether it's domestic or international that's looking for growth opportunities so it's really up to us how we capitalize on this uh, dynamic of enough liquidity and capital that's searching for yield and growth where our own prospects are really up to us and it's really we can control to some extent Uh, our own destiny because there's enough growth available domestically if we focus on the right kind of policies in the right kind of sectors so the third point is you know what do we do to ramp up growth and employment and i think uh, as i said it just consumption related sectors will not will not work um, unless we get uh, infrastructure real estate and construction going it's going to be difficult for us to try and get private sector capex and employment ramped up and that's because these sectors actually impact a lot of associated sectors that are capital intensive whether it's steel cement mining etc and the kind of employment that the construction real estate sectors uh, the impact that it can have on various other sectors the employment generation potential is very large if we actually focus on getting these sectors ramped up now the reason why uh, it's not that easy to ramp up an infrastructure or real estate area is because i think historically people have got burnt in terms of investments that they've made and that has to do with a variety of factors i don't want to get into the details some of them have already been outlined but i think fundamentally it has to do with risk allocation and i think um, the private sector should be asked to take the kind of risks that it is capable of taking if you ask the private sector to take risks that it should not be taking then you end up in trouble and i think fundamentally if you were to take the infrastructure area as an asset class globally infrastructure is a low to moderate risk and a low to moderate return asset class in our country unfortunately uh, because of the nature of the opportunity and the exuberance of our entrepreneurial community etc uh, unfortunately it ended up becoming a high risk high return asset class that is not the right framework in which you develop infrastructure in the country if you make it a high return high return high risk high return asset class then this is where you end up uh, in order to restore confidence a lot will have to be done for capital to flow back into these areas and uh, as you rightly said a large chunk of our developer community that's focused on these areas is stressed in terms of its balance sheet capability ability to invest in new projects etc so that is not a trivial problem to solve for in the near term or you will have to get new groups to focus on these areas that have not participated in these areas and the only way they will participate is if the framework that you outline takes care of the issues that the rest of the community has faced in the past and you have a structure that actually balances risks in a way that encourages people to come in and there is visibility of cash flow and visibility of completion and the government meets its part of the bargain and then the private sector has to meet its part of the bargain so that framework has to be evolved the financing of this is uh, obviously important because given the volume of capital that is required i don't think we can fund the country's growth based on bank capital for a variety of reasons including the fact that the banks themselves are stressed and don't really have that much growth capital to invest in 
Um, fortunately, over the last couple of years, the bond markets have actually accelerated quite a bit. And uh, a lot of the issuances in the bond markets um, uh, in the last couple of years has been on account of the banks being constrained. But the reality is that that has been restricted to the higher rated borrowers and it has been restricted to only a few sectors. So largely it has come from the financial services area and some of the public sector undertakings. Um, that has to do with the fact that institutional capital in our country is actually controlled by four different regulators. You have um, SEBI controlling your mutual funds, RBI banks, IRDA insurance and PFRD your pensions. The largest pools of long-term institutional capital, which is insurance and pension, um, their risk appetite and the thresholds that the, that the regulators have placed on the insurance and pension companies, uh, pension funds, is actually quite high. So you cannot invest in single A and triple B and all that. These, uh, these institutions can only invest in double A and higher. You cannot get an infrastructure project rated triple A or double A plus unless you have some serious um, credit enhancement that is provided. You cannot get there. Uh, you will at best get to a triple B level if you're lucky. Um, and then once it is operational and you have steady cash flows, you can then get it re-rated to a double A level, et cetera, and get the insurance guys to participate. So the reality is that if you're going to be stuck at a double A plus and triple A level, you cannot fund under construction projects. So the framework necessarily has to be the banks from a short term perspective being able to fund under construction projects because under construction is typically a three year period. Once the operation stabilizes, cash flow stabilizes potentially another two years. After that, that has to get refinanced in the bond market. But that has to then, you know, be rated appropriately. And I would argue that um, in a prudent way, the regulators have to also revisit uh, what pool of capital is available for lower rated paper. Because if your largest pools of institutional capital are available only to AA plus and AAA companies, a large part of the landscape is going to be left out in terms of access to capital. And so that also has to be rebalanced in some way. Uh, I think international capital is willing to flow in, but there again, you have to be prudent about how much foreign capital you get into debt. And Reserve Bank will also have some, um, some uh, concerns surrounding excess foreign debt um, uh, being relied upon for funding infrastructure because these are large these are large volumes so I think it's not that easy to solve uh, it, there are several things that need to fall into place in order to get long-term bond markets for funding infrastructure going I think from a regulatory perspective the government has done a few things including the invit structure that was put in place recently whereby developers can actually refinance their uh, operating projects by packaging uh, operating projects into invit structures and getting the invits listed. There are only a couple of them that have been listed so far. But that's an infrastructure REIT, which um, basically is a structure that permits uh, recycling of capital. There will be such innovative structures that need to be put in place. And uh, more fundamentally, um, institutional pools of capital being permitted to invest in the entire spectrum of paper rather than being only AA 